Hi everyone, I'm Zorus, and this is part two of the ultimate guide to engineers. So, in part one of uh, the ultimate guide to engineers, we consider what was making the engineer a peculiar faction, what was uh, unique about them, and we concluded that really what NGE are about is this special economy of them, meaning that you don't build things uh, with the same frame of mind and the same order than other factions. So uh, the first part give us kind of an insight into engineers' uh, economy. For the second part, we'll go to the ideal setup, what you look for in a setup with uh, engineers. Uh, we'll go for them, uh, their starting spots, spots and key hexes they should aim for. And we'll see if we have time to go for town spots and network. All right, so let's get started with their ideal setup. So what do you look for in a setup when you decide to pick NG? First of all, again, as any faction, and even more so, I would say, than any other faction, the first thing you should look for is what other colors are on board. Uh, NG, of course, are thrive against a uh, black faction. They have a kind, especially in the base map, they have a kind of synergy. Um, so if a black faction is on board, it's usually very good for NG. Uh, and then not as good, but almost as good, uh, brown faction have uh, similar synergy with NG, except that sometimes you'll have some battle for uh, some red axes with the brown faction. And blue faction, although they're not too far off on the color wheel, uh, the way the map is organized, you don't have much fight for the key hexes with them. So when if, if these three factions are in, it's usually very, very good for NG. If you have a game with these uh, three colors opposing NG, it means that NG has a really big edge playing in this game. Uh, more neutral, I would say, are yellow faction. Uh, they can be very annoying. Uh, we'll see that some red hexes are really key for NG. And, uh, sometimes, uh, and often actually, the yellow faction will come mess with, with that. Uh, so that's why I would kind of more uh, classify them as neutral toward NG. Um, and I, I'd say often Fakirs are actually more annoying than Nomads because of their jumping ability. And then enemy, uh, your color neighbors. I can, NG I find is very color sensitive. One of the, well, as many other factions, but one of the reasons uh, that make NG a strong faction is the fact that red faction don't get to play so much, uh, especially in the base map. So often you will have break uh, for red factions. Uh, but with green factions, it's a completely different game to play NG. We'll go into that a bit further in the video. But uh, against green faction, uh, it's a lot harder to play because the key hexes... Uh, there's many green key hexes that will be taken by uh, green faction from the start. It makes uh, NG's life much harder. So in terms of the track, NG will look for, first of all, if they can find a temple or trading post event early on, it's usually good for them because um, they will build two temples by round two, they will have built two temples in almost every game. Uh, temple is very good for them, it's very good economic um, boost because temple or and trading posts are cheap, so upgrading to a temple is really cheap. Um, so. And they want to have Earth 2 almost every game. So they will go for 2 Temple almost every game. Uh, meaning that if they can have early Temples and Trading Post events, good for them. Because usually other faction won't be able to build that much. Um, and actually, Trading Post events are pretty much 
Engie's best building and it's pretty good all around. Uh, maybe I, I find sometimes round three might be a little early, but even even then, I mean, I haven't put the trading post event here, but can be very good for NG2. It could, could easily have been there. Uh, so trading post events are good for NG as a general rule. A temple event I find later in the game is often too late. So round five, six is usually not a good idea. Uh, often you'll have already three temples by then, so it's kind of too late for you. Uh, other event that will be good is uh, the spade event. Not so much for the spade, but for the cult and calm that it gives. Since so Senji go two temples early on. Uh, they almost always pick Earth 1 and Earth 2, because that's the best favorite tiles for them. Meaning that they will get at least 3 coins from this event. Uh, and then if they can get a priest in there, they will get 5 or 6. So it's, it's easy for them to exploit this event, and it's, ba it's a better event than for anyone else. Because NG do more out of every coins than any other faction. So. Being able to cash in on these coins event is really, really good for, for NG. Um, because of NG's position on the Earth Cult, uh, you'll often want also the Town event uh, in round 2, 3, 4, uh, because it will you'll be able to exploit the speed. Um, and again, any cult income that NG can get is pretty good for them. It's better for them than for anyone else. So uh, that's a good event to have. However, too late in the game uh, is maybe not so good. And the reason for that is uh, even in round five where you can exploit the spade, that's interesting. But usually NG wants their town early uh, because and the reason for that is that they will benefit from the resources that you get from the town and often they will go for workers or coins and they benefit from these resources more than in a while seconds because they they do more out of every resource they can do more with every resource they get than anyone else so usually you want an early town for a town boost for the, the economic boost that it gives you uh, and that's why the town event is pretty good um, and then you have dwellings event so uh, dwellings event. I mean, you can see from uh, this uh, this track that NG are a pretty flexible faction, right? They can do a lot of things in a different order. Uh, so, but usually your dwellings you don't get them uh, until a little later, uh, and but if you plan well, often you can build really a lot of dwellings on one round. So around two, three, around three, four, five, six. It's often a good way to score uh, for them. And finally, the big buildings you usually want to do them late. Uh, and I would say usually the sweet spot would be around five, six. Sometimes there's a way to build an early sanctuary for trading post, maybe in round three or four. Uh, I mean, for getting water one before you build your trading post. Uh, so round three or four could be a possibility, and sometimes stronghold you want in round four. But as a general rule, I like late buildings. I would say that round five is usually the sweet spot. Uh, if you have a big building event in round 5 for NG, it's usually very good. Okay, and in terms of favorite tile, um, I like uh, the ones that give you workers, because again, uh, NG need worker and they will be able to exploit this. Often the one worker tree power I find really really good for NG, especially early on. And then you like uh, and often the big building ones will be more useful late in the game for NG. It can be really, really useful late in the game if you want to get up your uh, stronghold, say, in round 5. It's very, very good combo if you can get to work with, with this bonus. Uh, it's true with any faction, of course, but it's even truer with NG because the two worker will come very, very helpful. Um, and then... 
the spade uh, i find by experience tenji wants to dig a lot early so the spade will help them with that uh, the two coins again better than for any other faction uh, the trading post event often you want them early uh, trading posts are good for ng so that's usually a very good uh, very good news for you if this bonus is in that's something you want to look for and the pass shipping you'll often ends up with three ships in it with ng so it's a good way to convert your resources into point into points uh, as for bonus you don't want i find that uh, often ng tries and low coin game so often it will give you competitive advantage if these bonus are not in because often you'll build your trading posts earlier things cost less coins and so on uh, but uh, of course especially with those two it's really not deal breakers well none of these are deal breakers but it's, if one of these or even the two of them can still have doesn't mean you have a bad game again Energy can do a lot with these coins, uh, but if, if it's a low coin game, usually energy do better than most factions. So that's why uh, I've put that. The priest I find is probably the less desirable bonus for NG. Uh, again, no deal breaker at all if it's in. Uh, but thing is, you do more, more out of every resources on the bonus tiles than anyone else, except for the priest. The priest doesn't help you more than any other faction. So it means that it's probably the worst bonus for you. And then there is uh, the pass dwelling. Usually you'll do your dwelling a little later than other factions. So it's not as good for you. And the two coins is kind of low, so it's not as desirable for ng i find than for other factions all right so that's for the ideal setup that you will look for uh, when you play for ng uh, but again apart from the faction configuration this you have to, to know ng is very flexible none of these by itself is a deal breaker and there's way to accommodate very different things in ng ng's flexibility is among their great strength um, but now let's move to uh, our next topics now that we have considered ideal setup we'll see the starting spots that you look for and the key hexes that you'll aim to get uh, contrary to Darklings, NG are pretty easy to figure out in terms of starting spots. They always start the same two spots, one in here. The only exception is when the green faction is, and, and we'll look into that afterward. Uh, but if, if there's no green faction, NG will always, always start in these two spots. And uh, the idea is that these two spots, they are very central, they will give you a lot of leech. Uh, both in both kind of uh, spots where the action is usually going on um, and tells ng to not upgrade shipping too fast because there's many many digs there are many many hacks around that are just one dig for them so you don't need to end to upgrade shipping too fast you can just focus on digging these hexes uh, so you'll start uh, usually not necessarily in that order but the key hexes that you'll want, definitely these two, because it helps you getting this gray hexes. And again, uh, NG, you have to always be very aware when you're playing them that every resource can count. That's true for any faction, but that's especially true for a faction that has less resources than anyone else, but can do more with these resources than anyone else. So, and one of the consequences that you want to reach these free hexes and many of them will be easily accessible in the game so you want to reach as many of the free hexes that you can because saving the digging cost is huge uh, at the beginning of the game you want to save the shipping cost so that's why you start by digging every that's as a rule of, th of thumb i would say that you dig every hex that on, that cost only one spade 
and only once you have dig every hex that cast only one spade into two highland that were available, then you start to think about advancing shipping. But once you start advancing shipping, you want to get as many free hexes as you can. Um, so, and to do that, you have to keep in mind that there are some key hexes to aim for. Uh, in the center island, so again, you want all these hexes, uh, especially the two red, usually, because they are kind of key. Uh, this, the red top here will be key to uh, getting these two uh, gray hex. And the one here will be key to get the two hexes, uh, the two gray hexes here. Um, however, uh, once you advance shipping, you'll want to secure this X pretty fast. And the reason why, well, first of all, it makes sure that you can connect with three, three ships, which is uh, very important. You want to play for network, of course. Uh, and you don't have to pay the expensive two digs to get this one in order to do so. It also gives you access to the two free gray hex in the south. So it's kind of a, yeah, usually a very important hex to secure once you get shipping. Um, and same, so if for some reason you didn't get that red hex that gives you access to these two gray, at some point, so maybe Nomad, for example, got here, or Cultist, uh, at some point you want to secure one of these two hexes. And uh, it will be especially important, say, if Nomad is him, because he might be likely to aim for them. Uh, and in a recent game I've played, uh, I think it was Stream, uh, I ended up converting five power to one priest in order to secure one of these hex uh, before nomad do his stronghold and uh, get well dig this hex so i mean that's how important it is to be able to secure the way to the west and the south so yeah once you get these two hex one of these two then you can go to uh, to the southwestern hex and that's always how you want to develop first you uh, advance on your islands you develop your islands with every hexes that cost only one spade and once you advance you look for the three gray hexes so the two in the south there and uh, the four in the west in here so that's basically the key hexes when you play Angie. So that's basically your plan in every game where there is no green faction. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember and to follow. Uh, so you want you want to dig all you can and you want to ship afterward. If, if there is a red faction, maybe uh, gets this hex or this hex or this hex, it will complicate things a little so maybe you won't be for example the way north won't be open so it's always harder uh, but the plan the starting spots the key hexes that are still available it will look pretty similar i mean if a red faction is here maybe you want to dig this in order to get the four here uh, for your town or you'll try to beat the red faction to this hex in order to do a sanctuary and a tree dwelling town but it's not so a tree structure town it's not so different if however there's a green faction things will be a lot more complicated uh, and the issue here is that green almost always will start one hex here and one here and that kind of block both of your plan well several of your plans so if you you wanted to go here and do this uh, dig these two hex and connect gray so a very two efficient digs for three hexes but now the way is blocked by green and same goes for your way of extending this way this is blocked by green too and the odds are gray will beat you to this hex too which is free for him so um, often what happens is that, for example, green was picked after NG, they take the shipping bonus and they beat you to this hex. If, if for some reason they didn't take the shipping bonus, and, or if, you were pick, if NG were picked after wishes and there's the shipping bonus, by all means you should probably take the shipping bonus yourself and secure this hex, because as we've seen, this is a really key hex. Especially here, I mean, 
it's not only the key to the south, but it's also the key to uh, getting one of these two hex in order to go to go west. But most of the time, witches will beat you to this hex, meaning that your plan to go south and take these two free hex is kind of blocked too. Uh, so what do you do? Well, by all means, you should still start here because what remains of your plan is the plan is the expansion toward north to our northwest and so that that's still alive and that's still what you want to do you you'll want to start in the middle here uh, and expand this way as for the other dwelling then you have kind of more options and none of them are great and that's big problem of energy, right? When, when they lose the starting spot, because it's blocked here by green, it seems that they don't have much... Uh, they don't really have a good backup. And you'll have kind of three possibilities that are, again, not so good. You can start here. Uh, starting here, and we'll see what's the interest uh, of each of them. So I'll just name them and we'll investigate them further uh, next. So you can start here, you can start here, or you can start, say, what the heck, I'm still gonna start here. Uh, and so we'll see what's the plan with uh, each of these three decisions. Okay, so let's start with the first option, which I've called play small, because usually when you choose this option, usually it's because you intend to play uh, for a smaller network, maybe more for bridges, uh, and it implies to start here. Uh, personally, it's not my favorite, and right now in high level of Terra Mystica, it's not very much of use. Uh, the interest of starting here is especially if you are afraid that uh, witches might do a dwelling rush. It's that kinds of block witches uh, path in order to go uh, to this hex and then move to the west um, and take this hex too. So you're, it's an interesting spot because straight away you show your intention of not conceding the northeast witches. So you're, you want to fight for uh, maybe the, the green hex. This hex you take straight away. Maybe you want to fight for the green hex, but also the red hexes that you're going to uh, fight for. Uh, it's dangerous if witches is able to take this hex then you become very isolated and it's not so good. So the red hex here become really really key. Uh, but and the other drawback of this start is that you won't get much leech, right? You start next to no one completely isolated. No no one was going to build next to this to the sacks. Maybe here, but usually you want you want to be the one to take this. So you need to take this hex very fast if you want to start here, or at least you need to, to be able to secure this one and this one. Um, so it's a little slow, not much uh, leech in order to snowball, and that's a big diff big problem of fear. But otherwise, if you're able to survive this, if you're able to do, do then you'll have uh, if, and take this hex relatively early, at least before witches. Uh, then you can have an interesting sanctuary town here, and also. Uh, usually the idea here will be to take this hex, take this hex, and this hex, and kind of have this uh, little... You, usually you don't play much for network, probably you don't take... You, you might even not want Earth 1 in this kind of setup. Um, on the other on the other hand, the advantage is that everything is connected through one of network, uh, and you're very well positioned for the bridge strategy. So it might be one of these circumstances when you want to go for the bridge strategy. You see you have uh, one, two, three, four, four possible spots already for bridges. Uh, and you can even think of a way to connect everything with bridges and not even have to uh, advance shipping at all. So um, it's, again, you're, you're playing small, you're kind of uh, 
for fitting networks right away. If, if it goes very well, sometimes you'll be able to do a, tr a third town in this area, but that's kind of really, really rare. Uh, and still, with, with one shipping connected, but usually the thing is you won't get enough leech early on to be able to feed uh, your snowball economy and get there. Most of the time you will be stuck with uh, the these uh, eight hexes and you won't expand much over there so that's your first strategy against uh, green the possibility of starting here going for a small network bridges uh, and, uh, and try to yeah try to make the most of the bridges strategy and compensate for the small network and uh, the probably the worst one um, other possibility kind of more cool approach because uh, this here right you're deciding that you're going to fight which is uh, the one i've called more cool approach to start here and that's kind of a way where ng and witches try to split things uh, so you can you're conceding this kind of the north and part of the island to um, to witches uh, often Darkling will be here and he will probably block Witch's uh, advance here. If he doesn't, it's a little harder uh, for NG because they risk being beaten to this hex. But as long as Darkling is here and doesn't start to say double east, so as long as Darkling intends to block Witch's, it's, it's usually fine. Uh, and yeah, so the idea is that rather than fighting Witch's, you decide to kind of split the map. Uh, and you'll try for a bigger network uh, so something like trying to get uh, this these hacks uh, again here uh, it's kind of dangerous because even if, if darkling is double east then you have witches that might uh, come to steal this you have darklings who might come to steal the blue hex so it's not, and the, the fact that it's the blue hex first that you need to double digs makes it very hard. Uh, but still, in many ways, it might be still your best option. And on the center island, island you'll probably do something very similar to the other start. Uh, and the idea is that you'll be able to connect with three ships here if you take that hex. Um, and probably again, it will be it might be harder to do more than that although the fact that you more likely to advance ship in the strategy might uh, lead to grabbing at least one more hack so it seems that you have a better shot at network this way um, and then again if if it goes very well you might be able to do a town in this area but most of the time you won't have the the power because again it's a bit better at the start for power for leeching but it's not so great again so yeah maybe if you're really lucky you're able to go there but most of the time you won't most of the time you'll be stuck with uh, this kind of network so uh, that will be your kind of second plan uh, with ng also uh, sometimes on this kind of uh, configuration uh, that's when you will want to do a dwelling rush uh, so if you do a dwelling rush we'll talk a bit more later about the dwelling rush but the idea will be that you take you start here and you have one hex with one shipping uh, distance which is again another another interest of starting here you have a free hex very close that you can reach with one ship or even one bridge um, so yeah, in the in the drawing rush, then you will take this red hex, take this this gray. Uh, you will take this red green too, and making your connection easier. So that's if if you can, if you've picked uh, ng after, which is of or if ng were picked after, which is in the shipping bonus is there. That's definitely an option. So taking this green from from ng. Uh, from which is in making your connection easier, building a bunch of dwelling that, that can be an option. Uh, then there is this kind of third option, which is my personal favorite, although it's not always 
possible. Uh, it's what I call the last settlement opening or the last dwelling opening where you start here. And often if you look at a uh, new player in the game, they start here and they thought they think that the ID will be to kind of curl around here and try to escape. But I, I don't think that's the right approach to play this opening un unless you're playing with landscape. And then uh, you can put your landscape there because the landscape for NG it helps them to build in land bridges so you can build a bridge here and escape here so that's more practic practicable but let's say we're playing without landscape but I like with the last settlement opening so the idea is that you're gonna put the dwelling there but with no idea of getting out no idea of towning up it's just there to sink leech and to block which is uh, so you keep the dwelling there and maybe you update it to the temple for more leeches that's possible it becomes the last temple opening um, but the idea is that with all the leech you're gonna think you should be because often there will be cultists here and darklings here or darklings here who might go around you so it's ton ton of leech contrary to these two other spots which problem where you won't you are not getting much leech here you're getting tons of leech the problem is that you're not this dwelling is isolated it's not connect it won't connect and it won't town up it's just there for leech but with all this leech you might be able to attack more the north if you're lucky maybe you can even uh, I'll, I'll put the link to a game where i was even able to beat which was to these hacks in this game but that, that won't happen all the time for sure um, but also you might be able to uh, go west. Um, contrary to the two other options where you were kind of hoping to be able to go west, but usually you, you didn't have uh, the power to fuel it. Here it's very, very possible to be able to go west. The only thing is it's less likely to happen if Darkling starts center, because if Darkling starts center is gonna probably take these two hexes. Uh, faster than you can reach west. So if Darkling is uh, start center, the last dwelling is kind of much harder to pull out. Uh, but if, if he's not, say he starts double he's, for example, then it's, it can be real or strong. I think against double he's Darkling, I'm pretty sure that's the best opening is the last, to, last settlement uh, opening against so a, an eastern Darkling in which is uh, kind of really like this this approach all right so that will be it for this part two of the ultimate guide to engineers uh, we've covered the ideal setup and uh, the starting spots and key hexes the next video should be a shorter one uh, going for town spots which are kind of uh, easy easy to uh, spot and uh, the, the network which is usually your pretty much your uh, main strategy um, so uh, we'll cover that on the next video, hope to see you there, and uh, until then, have fun playing the game, bye bye.